Okay. So our next speaker is Christine Driller from the Senckenberg Society for Nature, Nature Research in Germany, um, who, and I'm sorry, I won't try to pronounce that in German, who will talk to us about fast and easy access to Central European biodiversity data with biofeed, bi biodiversity information science and standards. Oh, no, that's with biofeed, end it there. Uh, Christine, thank you very much. Thank you. Do you now see the PDF? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'm a postdoc working for the Senckenberg Society for Nature Research. And um, today I'm happy to present you um, our BioFood platform. So, um, this is an interdisciplinary project between the Senckenberg Society of Nature Research and the uh, University Library in Frankfurt, as well as the Goethe University in Frankfurt. And uh, this project is co-funded uh, since 2017. And um, we are a specialized information service for biodiversity research. Um, so what is our mission, our motivation? As the loss of biodiversity uh, is ongoing, it's becoming increasingly important to get some more data of species occurrences also from the past. And so we want to unlock biodiversity data from literature that is not available digital yet. And uh, so we hope to promote long-term data series and species occurrence and to improve our understanding of biodiversity um, change over time. So we um, offer different services and tools. We um, um, provide open access to current and historical literature. Um, we develop and provide text mining software tools to mine specific ontologies for semantic search and a semantic search portal to explore the literature. And um, Biofit is also hosting a journal platform. So today I want to tell you something about the data mobilization. And um, which data actually? Um, here you can see the segments of our um, text corpus. Um, we are focusing at the moment on Central European biodiversity literature um, that um, in turn focuses on vascular plants, birds, moths, and butterflies. Um, the literature has been published between 1850 and 2000. And uh, this uh, corpus is digitized um, in the course of our project, but uh, will also expand it um, with uh, data or literature from Zobodat and the BHL. So what are actually the challenges? Because um, there are many projects that um, use text mining for data extraction. But the thing is that um, our focus of the literature is um, mainly on German literature of the 19th century. So there are different challenges. There are biological reports, um, including technical and everyday language, but also there are many um, taxonomic names that changed over time and um, also many vernacular names and um, OCR is also a problem because it depends on the scan quality, the print quality. And um, so um, this is um, basically, this is important for the text recognition and uh, will maybe also have um, impact on the text extraction. So we are moving to So um, this figure is very complicated. It shows processes and tools that are necessary um, for data mobilization. However, I will not go into the detail in the following. I will essentially describe um, the parts that are now highlight here in color. Um, 
Um, so first, uh, some words um, on the natural language processing that we are doing. Um, here we have the text imager that um, provides many services um, in different languages. It's just a summary of it and it's already available on GitHub. And um, the next tool that we are using is the text annotator. And uh, this is a tool for a simultaneous annotation. And we use a multi-labeling approach um, involving um, the 26 top level wordnet categories. And um, this is extended by 11 biology specific categories. So as um, spatial and time information is very important to extract um, information on species occurrences, we also uh, link this annotation processes to ontologies uh, such as geonames and isotime ML. And um, now we just go to the BioFit search portal and I hope I can show you something, the performance of this portal. So um, you have two options. You can um, use the index search option or the semantic search option. Um, for the semantic search option, we are using ontologies that are based on the GBIF taxonomy backbone. And we also implemented some um, traits of, plant, of the plant um, trait database. Um, this is a testing version, so it's restricted uh, to around 5,000 articles at the moment. And we have also, as I said before, this uh, taxonomic focus. So um, what happens if we are searching for orchids? Um, on the right, you see the search results uh, when we use the index search option. And you see on the right side that the semantic um, search um, use much more um, hits. You can filter your results um, by publication year or author. And on the um, left corner, you can also see that you can download your results in JSON format at the moment. Um, you can also filter or select um, um, to your search and um, here is a list of um, taxa found um, in the documents and you can also um, get more information about a certain taxon um, because there's also a link to Jiva. For the next step I can show you how to further refine this search Maybe you want to search for orchids with green flowers, and uh, then you see um, the hits are decreasing um, because um, this is a more specific um, search. And here you have also the view on um, part of the text and um, the words or terms that are highlighted. Um, These highlighted terms are also um, based on the text mining or the machine learning that um, was used to pre-process the text document. Two minutes. Okay. So, uh, this, okay. so uh, we have uh, still limitations for um, searching. Um, so we have to expand uh, the articles and the taxonomic focus. And we um, at the moment have limited knowledge base linking and no relation extraction. So uh, I go first to the multi-label annotation. Um, back to show you something that we achieved. Um, so this is uh, summarizing it. We're using the Grippendorf's alpha to um, get an inter-annotator agreement. And here you see uh, one would be a perfect agreement between um, two annotators. And um, this looks already good for many um, categories. Here is a, just a graph where typical label pairings are shown. 
and uh, what actually affects uh, the consistency of annotation. Um, as you saw before, we have many uh, categories and maybe there are too many decisions that annotators have to make, too many rules or unclear annotation conventions. Maybe the word net categories are too general and uh, some categories are definitely underrepresented in our textbooks. So, um, but did manual annotation improved automatic tagging? Um, yes, depending on the category, our taxon um, classifier improved. So we increased the app score from um, 0.91 to 9.4. And uh, the next steps are the semantic role annotation that is important for the relation extraction. And we also want to improve the knowledge base linking that is in preparation. Uh, for the search portal, we are linking and synchronizing um, um, the search with DBIF and Encyclopedia of Life. And we also try to uh, enable um, at least English search um, queries. So here's an outlook for the second funding period. We also want to expand our taxonomic range to soil organisms. We cooperate then with EDAFOBase or EU EDAFOBase, and we want to expand the semantic search on plant pollinator interactions and also improve visualization of the results and uh, implement geotagging methods as well as active learning methods. So, with that, I close. And here are some information. We need uh, support, we need new stuff for the project. And they are also upcoming text mining workshops next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, before you all go racing off and start um, writing your job applications to go and work with that very interesting and exciting project, um, we have time for some questions. Um, Kristen, we have one question so far, which is from Quentin. He asks, do you think this would be harder in a Latin-based language because the scientific names don't stand out? <laughs> Actually, because I'm not a text technologist, I have no idea. I, I cannot answer it, actually, um, because I'm not familiar with this techni techniques. I'm the biologist of this project, so I'm focusing on what is interesting to search for and yes. Sorry, maybe, um, yeah, I cannot answer it actually. Quentin, would you like to um, um, come off mute and see if you've got any ideas? Yeah, I just, I've had a few problems in the past with this that just um, Italian particularly looks a lot like Latin still. And a lot of the words get confused and people's names are very similar to plant names and things like that. So that's why I was wondering about that. Um, I, I could imagine if you're trying to text mine Latin names within Chinese text, it's very easy, <laughs> for instance, uh, because they're the only things in a Latin script. Um, anyway, I'll have to think of some more biological questions for you. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but one um, thing I can say, um, at the beginning, I show you the text imager and the services it, it provides. So the most services are provided for um, English, German, Italy, uh, French, uh, Spanish. So there's still a focus on, on these kind of, of languages and um, Chinese or something like that is underrepresented. We have a, a question from Nikki Nicholson who asks, how do you plan to handle active learning? Would this be opportunistic? Uh, so as people use the interface or more deliberate? That's a very good question. Um, we are actually at the moment have, uh, the thing is um, the data must be, have an, we want to improve the quality and also they should be checked. At the moment, we don't know exactly how to implement this active learning. Um, some of my text technology colleagues uh, who are responsible actually for this working package, 
are not here at the moment, but maybe Gavin Kasperik, um, who is also a colleague and in the meeting room now, can maybe write something about that in the chat. Maybe he is knowing more about this implementation. So um, yes, but um, yeah, I cannot say details about that at the moment. Sorry. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, we do. Um, sorry, um, uh, I'm Gavin Kasperek, also from the Biofit project. Um, and regarding the active learning, uh, I'm sorry to say that I just was in, in, involved in some uh, chat and email activity, so I ca cannot answer this now. But we will take up this question um, just as we will do with the question on the Latin corpus and um, uh, forward it to our text technology experts and give you answers uh, on another channel. So please um, un understand. Thank you. And Nikki writes um, that that is certainly understood. Uh, Dimitri Shegel asks, what are your current and projected user bases, both data systems and human audiences? Um, so, um... We, uh, so um, you asked for the users that we want to reach? Yes. Okay. Um, we uh, try to um, contact biologists, biogeographers, people who are anyhow um, linked to biodiversity research. So we present our uh, work in different um, relevant international and national conferences and we also provide text mining workshops where we also um, directly contact uh, the research community and ask them to, um, to, to attend our workshops to learn more about the text mining and also to get some feedback um, on how to improve our tools up to now and also to improve our um, services and especially also the search portal. That's great. I, I, I had a question which where was I was wondering if you have um, much of a problem with false false matches. So place names being identified or place names being confused with species names and that sort of thing that sometimes gets reported when you're doing text mining. Yeah. Um, so um, the results I showed you today are not really uh, representing um, these links that we do with the geonames. I um, showed you that on one of the slides. So we try to um, match the location while annotating the text manually as exact as possible. Um, so we hope that this will also be represented later in the semantic search. But at the moment, um, there is no relation extraction and also no links um, to the locations. So if you are doing a semantic search at the moment, you will not, not get this out. It's in, in, pro in progress. That's great. Thank you very much for that. Um, that comes to the end of the questions that we have so far, um, but it's obviously a very a topic that people are very interested in. So um, we will wait to see if there's some more questions that come in um, during the other talks. So, Christine, thank you very much for your um, for your presentation today, um, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing more about it and get your job applications in if you would like to go yes. and work with the project. Thanks.